If you're sick of roller coaster dieting and are ready to look and feel your best, unlock that stuck metabolism, love your body again, and experience real and lasting results while never having to diet again, there's only one place to be. The Achievement Coaching with Coach Brett Podcast with your host, 30-year fitness and weight loss expert, Brett Rising Huber. Covering pro-metabolic nutrition, expert training methods for any level, developing an unbreakable mental makeup, kick-ass foods, cooking techniques, wine, and cocktails, and insights into helping you design and live your best life. So put in your earbuds, grab a hot or cold drink, and let's get rocking. Yo, what is up, everybody? Coach Brett here, and welcome to the Achievement Coaching Podcast with Coach Brett. We're going to have some fun today. First off, today we are in February, and February is in full swing. I know we're having a fun year, fun start to 2022, and I think it's going pretty good. How about you? I hope you're having a good start to it. In today's issue of the podcast, issue number five, wow, we'll be talking tacos, sun, workouts, and giving up in February. Crazy stuff, huh? So grab yourself something to drink. I got my R cup here for Rising Huber where I've got my espresso because I love my espresso. My espresso, I use good beans, grind them up fresh in my machine. I add in, I make a super espresso cup. I do some cream, real cream, real sugar, none of that fake crap, and some collagen. Mix them all up so it really gets into the bloodstream quite well. It doesn't like give you that impact of the sugar and everything else. Great way to go. And then, of course, as always. So without further ado, let's get into today. I'm really excited for today. One of my favorite things that I love to have, and I could probably eat almost every day, and I know there's tons of people just like me, tacos! I love my tacos. Tacos are awesome. Because you can get tacos to fit on any meal plan out there. You know, you want to do something super healthy, you know, like my my pro-metabolic Metrev meal plans um, and programming, you can fit them in there, no problem. Uh, If you decide you want to eliminate an entire food group for your body for some obscure reason and do something like a keto or a low-carb thing and you think that it's actually healthy for you, you can do low-carb tacos. They even have low-carb tortillas. I know, before I gave up all that kind of stuff and moved towards health being my number one focus, I used to eat tacos all the time, super low-carb. I kept them low-calorie, right? You can have low-calorie tacos too. Tacos are very versatile. And here's the cool thing. They're easy, they're versatile, and you could use leftover. So here's what I'd like to do so you have an idea. First off, I do use real tortillas. I use high-end tortillas. You get them at the grocery store. It's not really hard. High-end is what I call them. They're thick, they're rich, they're really, really good. And they have organic versions too. So read the labels, Boys and Girls Club. Read that label. Make sure you're not getting all that xanthan and guar gum crap because you don't need that in your body. It's just killing you slowly. You got the tortillas, you can have your leftovers. One of the things I love to do, I love to, they call it barbecuing, I call it smoking, right? And I'm not like talking smoking a joint or anything like that. I'm talking smoking meat, right? I take pork butt and nowadays I get my pork butt from Sprouts and really high quality, non-GMO, not a bunch of drugs being loaded into the animals, range fed as opposed to GMO corn and stuff like that. I make up a rub. I dilute some of it in some vinegar and I inject the pork and rub the pork and smoke the pork. That usually takes about 12 hours, nice low temperature like 225, and then shred that thing apart, package it up into multiple packages, freeze some of them, you always got a package to pull out. Now here's the other thing, you can do it with anything. If you had steak last night, you can have steak tacos today. If you made a whole bunch of chicken, chicken tacos today, you want some fish, grill some fish, Throw on some mahi-mahi tacos, whatever kind of fish you want. The cool thing is that they're so easy to do. And then what do you need? Get yourself some real sour cream. If you don't want sour cream, don't get it, whatever. Salsa, hot sauce, read those labels. I like Sprouts. Sprouts has a pineapple salsa in a jar, really, really good quality. And then of course, man, you got to put on your hazmat hot sauce. I also mess around sometimes with truff, truffle hot sauce, which is a whole different flavor characteristic and it's got some blam to it. 
And I love chopping up the avocados. They say we're coming into an avocado drought. Who knows? I know they're expensive, but they're good. Some green onions. I mean, let's say that you want to keep the carbs down. Fair enough. Then go ahead and grab a lettuce wrap or some of the low carb tortillas. I do not recommend the low carb tortillas because they are just loaded with bad stuff for your body. But if that's where you want to go, then that's where you want to go. So you got different options there. There are all kinds of tortillas out there. You got egg tortillas nowadays. Sprouts just has a ton of different things. I like Sprouts, they got some good stuff. So make up your tacos, put whatever on. You want some shredded cabbage, you want some pickled jalapenos. You look in my weight loss success club, you will find recipes for pickled onions and pickled jalapenos, chopped up habaneros, habanero hot sauce, so many different things you can do. And then rock out, have some fun. And here's one of my favorite tricks for you guys. You guys who are watching us on YouTube will get to see these. These are taco trays. So I got really different colors, but two different types. So we we'll use an orange one here. Holds three tacos, flip it over, holds two tacos. Metal, three tacos, flips it over, holds two tacos. They are great for just setting up your tacos. Now I'll be honest. I use the plastic ones almost exclusively simply because A, they're going to fit on the plate nicely. B, if I want to put them in the microwave to warm up my tortillas versus putting them in a pan or I want to melt the cheese. Yes, you could put on some cheese. It's an easy way to do it. And then just build them up out of there. Pick your tacos up and eat them. People will see these sometimes at higher end Mexican restaurants and they never think about getting them at home. Well, I'll tell you what, kids, on Amazon, these things are cheap. I don't even know how many, I didn't even get them all. I got a whole bunch of metal ones. I got a whole bunch of plastic ones. I absolutely love them. They are so handy and so easy to use. So if you don't have any of these here yet, get some. They're great. And if you're making a taco party, ah, oh, phenomenal. Great way to go. So you got lots of different things you can do with the tortillas. You can do with the tacos. Just be creative. That's all it takes is a little bit of creativity and some good foods in there. And you're going to do great with those tacos. So next thing we're going to talk about is going to be sun. So we're in February right now. And technically it's winter, but we've been experiencing a nice bout of sun. And it's funny. Sun is a great thing for us all the way around. And the first thing, when anybody compliments the sun being out during winter, in California at least, what do you hear? We need the rain. We always need rain. We've been having some crazy weather for quite some time. We've been in a bit of a drought. I think the people who manage our water are shitty. You know, our water supplies on the lakes and the reservoirs, I think they kind of suck at it. And yes, we need rain. But I'll tell you what, why is it that every time somebody says, oh my God, it's beautiful, love the sun, we need rain. Come on, give it a break. Everybody knows we need rain. Enjoy what has been given us. So whether it's Mother Nature gave it to us, God gave it to us, Buddha gave it to us, or it just happened, sun is a good thing, enjoy it. Do we need rain? Yes. Do we hope for rain? Absolutely. We got a pounding in the beginning of winter, and I like to have a confidence level and say, we're going to get more. Will it happen? I don't know. I can't control it. But what I can control is when I see the sun's out, I can control going out in it and enjoying it, regardless of the fact that, yes, we could use some more friggin' rain. We know that. So let's talk about sun since it's winter. And what happens in winter? We don't get much sun. And sun has so many benefits for us. Get a little bronzing on the skin, or at least on my skin. I get tan. We're gonna get the vitamin D, not from a pill or a capsule or a gel cap or anything else. We're getting vitamin D directly from the sun. So good for you, so good for us. It supports bone health, which is big. It's one of the reasons why I love milk and just strengthening the bones, lowering your blood pressure, stress, blood pressure up, sun helps bring down. That's a good thing helps prevent disease and it promotes. And here's the biggest thing and the reason why I love spring and summer and even early fall because it promotes good mental health. Mental health is humongous. And we got a lot of people out there with depression. There are places out there, Seattle, Seattle, Washington, beautiful place to be, right? Beautiful place to visit. 
I would not personally want to live there because they don't get enough sun for what I want out of sun. I want a lot of sun in my life. I love the sun. I love being out on the water. Love being out on the boat. I love getting the sun. Makes me feel good. If I have gray skies too long, I start to get into a funk and that's not where I want to be. I remember when I graduated from San Jose State with my degree back in 1994, I decided I was gonna take a road trip and I was gonna look around and I was gonna try to figure out where is it that I'm gonna open my business, my first gym, where is it gonna be? Is it gonna be in the Bay Area where I grew up, where I lived my life, or was it gonna be somewhere else? And my family's all from up in Oregon on the Oregon coast, so I decided, all right, let's contact the Eugene, Oregon Chamber of Commerce and rap with them. I called them up and I'm rapping with them and I don't remember the exact words that they said, but they said, yeah, everybody thinks that it always rains up here, you know, and it only rains from this month to this month. And I don't remember which months they said, but at the time I thought, hmm, it sounds funny, but I just graduated college. So let me count on my fingers. <laughs> Let me count on my fingers. How many months out of the year is that? And I'm like, that's nine months out of the year it rains and it's overcast and it's shitty. And I'm like, three months, I can't handle that. There is no way I'm moving from the South Bay area, beautiful weather almost all the time to overcast. And at that point, I wasn't even looking further north, no chance. I'd already lived in San Diego. San Diego, I went to San Diego State for two years when I graduated from high school. And down there, though it was beautiful, it got hot and nasty in the summer when those Santa Ana winds came in. But there was also only one season, right? It was like one season where during the winter it rained a little bit, but that was it. And I always grew up in the Bay Area with different seasons and it was really nice. And I missed that, though winter is my least favorite of the seasons, I don't like being cold. I just couldn't go down there. I didn't want to go back down there and, and live in one season for my life. And that's my choice. Everybody's got choices. So, you know, that's all good, all good. But we need the sun. So yeah, we need the rain, but we need the sun. We need the sun for our body and especially our mental health. And vitamin D, we know that that's an important thing to have in their body due to all the research during COVID, right? So vitamin D. I know we were popping vitamin D3 like it was candy during COVID and get more sun. That's a good thing. Now, important, 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 important. We're going to talk training. We're going to talk workouts and we're going to talk giving up in February. Halfway through February, there is a big change in everything. So, and we could step back a notch and we'll go into January. What happens in January? Everybody makes these little New Year's resolutions. And I put those in quotes, right? New Year's resolutions. I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. I believe that you can have New Year's goals and set your plan for the new year, but not a resolution. I would say, know what you're going to do, know what your targets are, know what you're going for. But in January, all of a sudden, where the gym was empty, the gym is now full, it's packed. In fact, I've been going to a gym quite some time. My new home is down in Roseville. And I like to work out and then I head down, I get into the locker room and there's a, uh, it's kind of like a spa room, right? Where they got comfy lounge chairs, big screen TV. On one side is a sauna, on the other side is a steam room and behind is a jacuzzi. I've never been in this room where there's more than a couple of people in it and I've never been in the jacuzzi where there was anybody else in it. All of a sudden in January, I go in there and there's four people in the jacuzzi, two of them got masks on. I've never seen any of these people before. And I'm like, oh, that's right, it's January. Everybody's got their New Year's resolutions and they're coming into the gym. And the gym was busy. In fact, I went there today and I went a little bit later than usual. It was packed. But I also know that that's not gonna last much longer. And here's why. The gyms start clearing out after the January rush and it turns into the late February chill and it kind of gets back to normal, where everybody who came, balls to the wall, busting out, working out eight days a week, which nobody should be doing, even elite level athletes, they start to fall off, and it happens. Gold's Gym did a study a long time ago, and they studied four years of data, and they found that a drop-off in membership check-ins started around February 12th. That was when people had just kind of dumped off their New Year's resolutions 
And by February 18th, huge dump off. And so that's why I call it midway February. We'll get the February chill coming in later and it'll start relaxing. Now, why is it that this happens? Because this is a big deal, right? I think everybody should be doing their workouts of some sort. I think they need to gauge it based on their body and how they feel. Like today, I was a little bit tired because my dog apparently had upset stomach, got me up three times during the middle of the night. So today's workout for me was lighter than usual. I just kind of went, I went through some motions, I got it done. I got in the jacuzzi outside nowadays, so I don't have to worry about the inside thing. Come back and now doing a podcast. But I think there's two reasons why people drop off those New Year's resolutions and why we get the January rush turning into the February chill. So I think the first reason is accountability. People go at it on their own. Now, I've been in the fitness business since 1990, 91. And I know that people who have either an accountability partner or a coach, they're the ones that stick with it more, right? Now, 97% of the people need that, right? There's a small 3% of people who can do it on their own, right? But most people need that accountability one way or another. Most people need a coach saying, yo, hey, did you do your workout? Where are you? What are you doing? What's happening? Okay, what's going right? What's going wrong? Give me some wins. Give me some losses. Tell me what we need to work on. They need that accountability coaching. Now, without that, they simply can't keep it up and they fall off and they hit that February chill time where everything falls apart and the wheels fall off the bus. The other thing is the goals that they set are often unrealistic. And even if they are attainable, they may not know how to actually attain those results. And regardless of all of that, if they don't have the right goals, then when they don't achieve the goals in the timeline that they think they should, they get frustrated and they bail. Now, I know historically, you know, I was the king of the six week, 20 pound challenge and I could get people. They followed my instructions. They followed what we said. They did our program. 90 plus percent would lose the 20 pounds in six weeks. Now the problem becomes keeping it off. And you know, you want to make sure now, now the way I look at it is the important thing is health, right? You don't have to lose 20 pounds in six weeks. Lose 20 pounds take six months. Big deal, right? Whatever. It took time to put it on. It takes time to take it off. But do it in a healthy way. I firmly don't believe that the way we used to do it was healthy. And but things change, right? We learn, we educate ourselves. When people don't achieve the goals in the timeline that they think they should because they set unrealistic goals, they quit, they give up, they drop their goal, they drop their dreams, they drop their aspirations that they set for themselves. And these goals they set was just a few weeks ago. I mean, we're talking mid-February. They started, they probably didn't start till January 3rd, right? Because on January 1st, they were freaking hung over. January 1st, they're watching football and then drinking some more beer. And then January 2nd, they're hung over again. Right? And this is, you know, I'm just kind of being funny there, but hey, it's true, right? It's true too. So it's been a few weeks that they've had these goals set. So let's round it up. Let's say it's been six weeks. And in six weeks, they expected to have these massive changes without a coach, without an accountability partner, without somebody telling them how to do it, just doing it on their own. And they feel like failures because instead of losing 20 pounds, they drop five. A pound a week is a lot and it's good. In fact, it may be even too much but it's a success. So one of the things that happens is people look at their successes, but they don't feel that it's a success because it's not this lofty goal that they set up. I could say, hey, I want to start today and I want to be a millionaire by the end of the year. Good luck with that. That's not realistic. We can all agree with that, right? I mean, can it happen? Yeah, you might hit the numbers on the lotto, but generally speaking, no. It's not that attainable. It's not realistic. So set your goals, set them realistic, and make it so that you can achieve these goals. You don't have to lose 100 freaking pounds in a week. You don't have to lose five pounds in a week. If you lose five pounds in your first week of dieting and think that's gonna continue, forget about it, you're wrong, okay? That five pounds was mostly water. You didn't lose five pounds of fat in a week because a pound of fat is 3,500 calories, all right? So 3,500 times seven, yeah, it's 24 
1,500 calorie deficit in a week. No, when you're doing that, you're burning off your muscle. You're weakening your body. You're weakening your immune system. Okay, it's water that came off because you changed what you were putting into your body. Your body freaked out. It dumped a bunch of water, right? And then they come up and they find they don't lose five pounds the next week. They get frustrated. They think they did it all wrong. They think everything's going wrong and it's never going to work for them. And they give up and they quit. And I've been in the industry more than 35 years. I've seen it happen. I've coached people out of it more times than I can count. And I'll do it again, right? The big thing is you've got to just go in for the long haul and the long run. And I've said it before. And right now, as I'm thinking about the calendar, I'm tripping out. I'm about two weeks away from my 53rd birthday. 53rd, I'm gonna be 53 years old. And my goal, yes, I wanna lose the rest of the body fat. Yes, I wanna increase the muscle. Yes, I wanna be healthy. But that's the real thing is I wanna be healthy. I wanna figure out what my body needs to be healthy so that the weight comes off. And I'm looking for the next 53 years. 53 years are almost down right now. I want another 53. So goal now, 106. Realistic, could be, possibility. I'm gonna work for it. I'm gonna eat healthy, I'm gonna make it happen. So please don't get caught up in quitting halfway through February and hit that February chill, that February cliff. Keep going, don't worry about lofty goals. Set a goal of doing it. I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to have pro-metabolic foods. I'm going to get my steps in. I'm going to get my workouts done. I'm going to have an accountability partner or a coach, right? And I'm going to make sure that I just stick with the plan long term. It's not about short term, guys. Don't get caught up in the short term thing because everybody wants instant results, instant gratification, and it's not the way to go. Just not. So I did a workout this morning. Let's change. Talk about my workout. Like I said, I did kind of a casual workout today. And what I want to share with you now is my post-workout recovery drink. So good. And here's what I did. First off, I have a, it's an insulated mug. It's metal. I'm sure you've seen them. You probably have six of them or at least one. Mine is black and it has a lid on it that you can sip your coffee or whatever while you're driving in the car. You can plug it up and shake it up. And this one was a gift to me from my assistant, extended family member, Marina. Love you, kid. I know you're listening to this right now. I'll give you a plug right there. It says it's a black mug. And on the side of it, it says the man, the myth, the legend. And I think it's just funny as hell. I freaking love it. Now, I usually use it for beer. I love my beer. And no, you're not going to drink beer and lose a bunch of weight. So you got to taper that stuff off. But when I do drink beer, I get it from Moonraker Brewing Company up in Auburn, which I'm happy is like 25 minutes away from me. It's awesome. But I usually fill it up with some Moonraker high octane, hazy New England style IPA. That's my beer, baby. That's my beer. When I drink beer, that's what I want. But today it was workout day and I made up my recovery drink and I wanted to put it inside of this thing so that it's cool. So that when I got back out to the car, I can enjoy it on the way home. And if I needed to stop at the store and get some more stuff, I could. So in my post-workout recovery drink, I put a few things in it to make sure that it has really good balance and fuels my body. Now, when you're consuming your foods or your workout drinks, we want to make sure that we are getting a balance of our carbohydrate slash sugar, protein, and fat all mixed up in there so that the sugar doesn't jump into the bloodstream super hard, super fast. We wanna make sure that everything gets through the body at a nice, even keel, nice, even pace. So I put in a base of milk. I used a low fat, organic, grass-fed, free-range milk that I love. And then I'll add in about a tablespoon, let's call it a heaping tablespoon, of organic cocoa powder, cocoa, cocoa, cacao, I don't know. I never know how to pronounce that shit, but whatever, whatever it is, I love it. Put it in there. I add in a heaping tablespoon of glutamine powder so I can help facilitate recovery of the muscles that I just trained. Now, we want a little bit of sweet in there, a little bit of sugar. So I put in some organic honey and I add a pinch of salt in there and I get all that mixed up in there and then I'll top it up with the rest of the milk, shake it up and I let it sit in the car and it's in this insulated container. So it's okay. I'm going to be in the gym for I mean, total time. 
including showering and jacuzzi, call it an hour and a half, right? And that's not all working out. I don't need an hour and a half of working out. And I get out to the car and I enjoy it. And as I was leaving the club today, drinking on my drink, I started thinking about this drink that I've become come to love post-workout. And I remember back when I worked with the awesome Alan Cosgrove of Results down in Southern California. I love Alan, he's he's an amazing guy. He used to be one of my mentors and coaches, and I always love still listening to him. I guess once a mentor and a coach, always a mentor and a coach. But he always said you needed to have the sugar within 30 minutes of your workout to help facilitate the recovery process in the body and to refill your glycogen stores so that you have energy for your next training session. And back then, not just me, but me and all the other people that were coaching under Alan, we all had issues with the fact that he wanted us to put sugar in because we were all anti-sugar. Everybody still is anti-sugar and I'm not anymore. No way, Jose, Uh uh-uh, not happening. I want some sugar in there because my muscles want it, they need it, and they use it as primary fuel source. I will burn body fat, yes. I do not want to burn off my protein, but if you don't have that sugar and those carbohydrates in there, then your body is burning the wrong stuff for energy, you're making it work super hard, and you're putting it through a lot of stress and duress that it doesn't need. Now, I get it, and I want the sugar in there, and I put it in there. I don't want that fake sugar, you know? I'm looking down, and I've still got a garbage thing over here full of Walden Farm stuff and everything else that I just been too lazy to take downstairs and throw away. I want to have that sugar in there to help facilitate the recovery. I want to have the glutamine in there to help facilitate the recovery and get the muscle tissue to grow, to recover, to get stronger. Milk. My God, milk is like a perfect food. If I don't feel like eating, but I know I need nutrition and it's time to put something in, I'll drink the milk. I mean, milk has protein, fat, carbohydrate, all in one thing. It's a perfect food. So when I'm adding that and I'm putting the honey, the milk, the honey, I put in the collagen to balance out the portions of proteins that we don't get into our body normally because all we're eating is muscle meat. When you add the collagen in there, it helps out too. You add in the honey, that gives you the sugar and you're getting it from an organic source and it's awesome all the way around. And you know, so that's it. Pinch of salt, tablespoon of honey big scoop of collagen, milk, you want whole milk. My preference nowadays, whole milk, grass-fed or organic. I like Strauss is my milk, that's the milk I love to use. Great taste, it doesn't get too much of that grassy characteristic, which I am slowly working on still. And then the collagen, you mix all that up in there together with the cacao, cocoa, however you wanna call it, I don't know. Powder, organic, of course, please. You got a chocolate milk, it's amazing, and it's so good for your body, and you can control the quantities of everything you put in there, right? So if you need to keep your calories a little bit lower because your metabolism isn't ramped up yet, then go with the 2% or the 1% milk, fine, right? Maybe a little bit less of the honey in there. What is a tablespoon? It's not that much. But this is the best way to start that recovery process. And remember, you do need to recover. Pay attention to your body when you're training and know how you feel. Didn't sleep good. Should you be training at full speed? No. Should you be maxing out, lifting heavy, super mega weights? No. Slept really good, had great recovery, have had good nutrition, stress is low, everything's rocking, body temperature's up. Should you train heavy? Sure, why not? If you feel like, if you're that good, yes, that's a day to get in and nail. Really feel like crap. Think maybe you're getting sick. Haven't been sleeping good. Nutrition's been crappy. Should you go in and work out? No. Should you go for a walk? Yes. Get your steps in. Shoot for the 10,000 steps a day. It's an arbitrary number, but it seems to be a pretty damn good number for everybody. So today we were talking tacos, we were talking sun, we were talking workouts, we were talking giving up in February and not and setting those goals and workout recovery drink. Awesome. Coach Brett, thank you for spending time here. Thank you for listening to me. Please send me your comments, send me your feedback. Jump into my weight loss support club on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter at Americas. Follow me on Instagram at San Jose Weight Loss or Achievement underscore Fitness. Hop on to, like I said, the Facebook group is free. All you gotta do is jump in there and put in your little application. Take five seconds. Jump in, and if you need help, 
If you need a coach, if you need somebody to give you direction, if you need somebody to make sure you don't hit that February chill or that February cliff, whatever it is, so that you can keep going, ping me, let me know, right? Send me a message, we'll talk, right? No commitment needed, just conversation, let's just talk, right? If I can help you, I'd love to. So with that being said, kick ass through the rest of February, and this is Coach Brett, I'll see you next week, I'm out.